Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This is Jez 26 Tango Mike 062 and 2E0 IQJ. So last week's video the antenna came down with what I called Storm Sierra, but it's Storm Kiara, Kiara, Kira, however I pronounce it, caused down to my antenna system and I was hoping to get out in a week and test it, see if the antenna still worked. But all week long it's been pouring around, very, very windy, it's not been great weather. Now a comment came in from Fred in the shed to say it's nature's way of telling you get a 2016. I'm sorry to hear about the loss of the antenna. Well, if that antenna still works, then I'm not going to change it, Fred. There's no way. Don't need to. If it still works, it still works. So, for in the weeks, uh, next week, I can get in about and test it with the analyzer. See if it's uh, damaged in any, any, any way. Maybe replace a few of the U bolts that are rusty over the years. So, what I thought I'd do in this video is go, uh, show you my recent pickups I've got for ham radio stuff on. Um, eBay and the Canvey Island Rally. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the end card and you can see a, a quick view of the Canvey Island Rally. So what I picked up from eBay is for 11 meters, something to test mobile, is one of these Sigma antennas. Now I don't know if they're any good or not. Simon the Wizard had one and he seems to be able to make contacts um, to, to another another country. Maybe it's when the old Australia Key was, he, he was running. Maybe it's running a, a bit more than standard power. But I want to test this with the CRTS Mini. So we can do all four watts and a little antenna. Be a good experiment to try. So hopefully tomorrow, so if you're watching this, I might be out about doing it. Or Thursday if the weather's great. I can go out and about mobile in the vehicle and uh, test this antenna out, see if it's any good. So what else I picked up from the Canvey Island rally is this, and this is a Watson Multi Ranger 9 HF UHF multi-band mobile antenna and I got this from the guy at Hayden Communications at the bottom there it tells you how to adjust it so it's one of these ones that you've got the the cable you just adjust you take the cable out and place it in now this seems to be better built than my SPRX100 that I've had no luck with I want to give that another try the SPRX100 but this thing seems to be a lot more better built there's an SO239 socket all you do, so at the moment, is sitting there in number three and number one, which is 20 meters. So I presume you put it down there, in there, and that'll do your 40 meters. Then you use the Allen key and adjust it there for your SWR, make it nice and low. And it did say, when you get it low, run it across an ATU, and then it should be, be a lot better. So I'll give that a try. And when I was feeling about with it, just on the mag mount, on top of an old free view box, the SWR on 20 meters, I was able to get down to around about 1.5, 1.6 using the analyzer. Plugged it straight in and I thought, oh, God, it's high, 9, 9 is to be no good. Let the analyzer settle for a few seconds, bang, come down to 1.6. So, uh, yeah, be trying that. Maybe that go on the back of the bike. What do you reckon? Be quite interesting. One of these errors on the back of the bike. Yeah, that's a, that's a video right there. And about on the bike one, with one of these. Something else I've picked up is a. Uh, NEIM 1031 MK2, so Mark 2, BHI amplified DSP noise eliminating inline speaker module. Apparently, it removes up to 98% of the noise. There's the instructions for it. I got this from the Canvey Island rally. I got all the cables and I got the actual unit itself. I haven't tested the unit yet. I plugged it in. There is power coming into it, so I presume it's all going to be alright. It's all going to work. All the, got all the cables in there, all the, and he said there's some mono cables, and all this sort of stuff. So I've been playing with that at some point. And the guy did say to me, um, before plugging it all in, RTFM, RTFM, and RTFM. So I'll be doing that. It seems to be quite simple to set up. He said because when he when he had it, someone set it up for him, and it was rubbish. When he read the manual and set it up himself. A lot better, so be I've RTFM'd, so hopefully, do a video on that at some point. So, I plug into my desktop speakers that I've got from the boot sale for a pound, my Creative Lab speakers, or should I plug it into my Yasu speaker? I don't know, we'll, we'll try it in a, in a future video. And something else I picked up this was fully boxed. I got the box instructions, cut of aerials, I got everything except the battery and the carry strap and the case, but I don't think they come with it. The, the carry strap in the case, maybe they do, I don't know. But I've got a little QRP rig, nice piece of kit. This is this is a Yasu Fox Tango 
817. Um, one has been, one of one is for a while, uh, Frio had one. And I was like, wow, look at that, nice little unit. He said, yeah, they're good bits of kit. So I'm going to try that mobile. Maybe stick that on the back of the bike. I'm not going to put it on the front handlebars because that would be all over the shop. But put it on the back of the bike without what's an HF. See what we can do, mobile. Yeah, that'd be an idea. With it, like I said, I got the antenna. That's the one for 50 megs, so 6 metres. I got the, it was all boxed. And we got in the box the charger, which I've put, which is over the other side of the room. The instruction manual, if you can see that. And we got a quick reference guide. I'm not sure where that comes with it, but maybe it's just something they've added. But it didn't come with the internal battery, but it did come with a uh, battery pack. Um, so you can plug in some AA batteries. So I'll be trying that at some point. What antenna should I try it with? The Watson, the new antenna I've just bought to play with on the bike. Should I try it with a Wizloop V2, see if these things actually work. So I wanted to try this and this with FT8 so I could take a laptop out, try some FT8 with the Wizloop V2, see if we actually get anywhere. Or should I try it with this dipole that I've had for ages and done nothing with? You can see there's different colour bands for um, setting it all up. So I need to find instructions for that online somewhere. Be interesting to see if that thing actually works. I've never done nothing with that. It's been sitting in the bag for two years or so, a year. So that was my recent ham radio pickups. But I am liking this 817. I have tested it on uh, the local repeater VH. And reports come in saying it's good quality audio. It's working lovely. And I'm hoping the microphone... It's wired the same, looks the same, as the 857. So I've got a spare mic for either radio if one goes down. So if I need to use, say, uh, this microphone on the, 81, on the 857, I can do it if it goes down. Anyway, that was a quick look at all my recent pickups for ham radio and CB stuff. Hopefully in a week I can go out and about and test that antenna, see if the old uh, silver rod lives on. Fingers crossed, she, she will still, still live on. So I'll catch you in the next one. This is 2E0 IQJ 26 Tango Mike 062 73.